Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm just gonna do a brief recap on Snowflake's 2022 summit held in Las Vegas a little bit earlier this month. Hopefully it'll save you some time going around trying to piece together all of the key announcements. In the opening keynote speech, there was a mention of seven pillars of innovation. So let's just quickly talk about those. The first thing that was mentioned was all data and all workloads. So this was referring to Snowflake's capability to be able to store structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data formats, as well as handling different kinds of workloads. So that it's not only data warehousing, OLAP workloads, but also a data application and OLTP style transactional workloads. This is really trying to make Snowflake that single data store in the cloud for all of types of data and workloads. Snowflake's architecture then ensures that there's no competition for resources or contention and it doesn't place limits on workloads, as well as being able to tap into the instant elasticity of the cloud. And that leads me to the second point, which is all about programmable. And that's where Snowflake are making a big play towards. They want to be the place where data applications are built. And they have significant advantages because data applications, they need to use many different workloads and a wide range of data. So combine that with all data and all workloads, opens the door then for data engineers to build applications on top of Snowflake. And this then starts to push the envelope beyond just standard database functionality. It allows you then to run your most important data applications in the Snowflake data cloud. And this includes the announcement for Snowpark with Python, which is now in public preview. Once you've got all that data in one place and you build your applications on top of it, that brings me to the next two pillars of the seven. The first one is a global architecture. So this is all about being able to use SnowGrid, which is a unified global platform operating at scale, which allows for cross cloud and cross region replication across the three major cloud providers. And the next pillar, which enables you to share that data more broadly and more widely and easily is the data marketplace. So this allows you to deploy those applications at scale. So this allows you to monetize your data and applications, and you can share them through the data marketplace. And there's now an app store for data and applications built in to the service. The next pillar is around being self-managed. This is all about the simplicity of Snowflake. Basically, you get given the service. Simplicity is key. There's no complexity or configuration needed. It's one platform designed to work out the box and that acts as a catalyst to enable you to start adding business value faster. The next pillar is about industry alignment. You may have noticed over the past few months, Snowflake have made several announcements that are industry specific. One example of this is the financial services data cloud, which is a connected network that allows financial organizations access to tailored solutions or recipes, if you like, that are delivered by Snowflake, leveraging the partner ecosystem. This builds on the financially relevant data that's available natively today within the Snowflake's data cloud. And the final pillar, but as important as everything else, is governance. So this is about trusting Snowflake with your data, making sure that it's always secure, encrypted, and compliant, and that's consistently enforced in a common way regardless of the cloud platform provider beneath Snowflake or the region that you're operating in. So now if we just go a little bit deeper into some of the key announcements that fit beneath those seven pillars, starting with the all data, all workloads, Apache Iceberg was one of the, uh, the key ones. I've done a previous video about what Apache Iceberg is and how it will benefit you. Um, I'll put a link in the, in the top of the screen now so you can check that out. But essentially, it's about extending the support for external tables. So this is your data that lives outside of Snowflake. And Apache Iceberg is an open format that allows you to specify a file format over the top of those tables so that if any product accesses that, Snowflake or Spark or Presto, for example, everybody uses the same format across your organization to access those tables. The next one is around Snowpipe Streaming, which is currently in private preview. 
And this is an updated, redesigned version of the Kafka connector, which allows near real-time delivery of data. And apparently it improves the latency by a factor of around 10. It's serverless, so you don't need to worry about provisioning and configuring clusters. And Snowpipe Streaming ingests data as row sets instead of stages. And these row sets then effectively allow data to stream into Snowflake and they work then really well in conjunction with another new feature called Materialized Tables that allows you to write some code in Snowflake telling you how you want Snowflake to interpret that stream in data. And it will also manage the incremental refreshes to materialize that data to make it look like a table within your Snowflake account as that data continues to stream in. So then you can actually join streaming data with let's say reference data sets which are persistent already in a standard relational table within your Snowflake environment. Moving on to the application development category. We mentioned earlier about Snowpark for Python and Snowpark, if you don't know, is a Snowflake's developer framework allowing you to build and write AI ML applications and deploy those within Snowflake without needing to move data outside of the platform, therefore tapping into the scale and performance of Snow Snowflake. There's now native Streamlit integration. So Snowflake recently announced the acquisition of Streamlit and Streamlit now has been fully integrated into Snowflake. And this means that you don't just have data programmatically, but you can expose it using Streamlit through interactive user interfaces to business users potentially. We've also got the native application framework currently in private preview. This allows you to easily monetize data applications from all within the Snowflake data marketplace. You can build and distribute with serverless deployment. So all those challenges that come with usually building and deploying a data application are all managed and addressed within the native application framework built on top of Snowflake. Next up in this section, we've got the Unistore and hybrid tables. And again, I mentioned this in the previous video um, when we summarized the first couple of days from the Snowflake Summit. In short, this allows Snowflake to handle both OLAP and OLTP, so analytical warehouse workloads as well as transactional workloads, whereas typically you'd often have to have two different types of databases tuned for those different workloads. Unistore now aims to bring those together within the Snowflake service and using hybrid tables is a way to actually deploy that within Snowflake. If you're interested, I do go into a little bit more detail about it in our previous video. So I'll put a pop-up banner at the top of the screen now. The final key announcements I want to talk about is in the governance pillar. And this is all about trusting Snowflake with your data. And there's some key announcements around governance. The first one was all about tag-based masking which allows for the easier automation and assignment of masking policies for sensitive columns within your data. You can effectively do that based upon the tags assigned to the data. Next up, we've got column data lineage, which is coming soon to private preview. So we'll get more information on that in due course. And also in the pipeline is new data governance interface, which is all built around the new tags and masking policies and bringing those all together. There's one or two other smaller announcements, but I'm not going to cover those here. This is a summary of, the, of what I feel are the key ones. So I hope you found that useful. If you're interested in learning more, these are just some of the updates that are going to filter through into my Master in Snowflake program, which if you stay tuned, I'll provide some more details next. If you found that useful, keep watching, keep subscribing. New videos coming soon. I also wanted to let you know about our Master in Snowflake program with myself that we run and it's, it's an exclusive signature program to help you master Snowflake and learn how to design, implement and scale solutions in the cloud. And I've designed this program specifically for those people who have either scratched the surface using Snowflake or who are stuck working with legacy on-premise technologies and haven't been invested in by their companies and have fallen behind in their career. And what I've done is packaged up my knowledge and experience of working with Snowflake since 2017 and learning how to package up Snowflake's out of the box capabilities in a way where you can apply them in the real world to address common challenges. So this program isn't about theory. Of course, I need to introduce you to the concepts if you're new to Snowflake and many of my members are, but it's really about introducing the theory and then in practice, how you apply those in the real world. I've been through the pain of understanding what works and what doesn't. Now I've got a formula or a set of recipes, if you like, that show you how to do that. So the Master and Snowflake program includes in-depth, on-demand video course content that I've created 
that all include practical hands-on demos. I provide access to all the code, templates, and files that I use as part of those demos, so you can download them and use them freely. You may want to use them in your day-to-day -day work. You may want to take them and customize them and use them as a starting point. All members on the program get exclusive access to a members-only group where everybody can help each other out and share their knowledge and best practice and get expert advice. Finally, I also carry out a group 60-minute coaching call with all the members, totally optional, where you can ask me anything about Snowflake, data analytics, data strategy, data architecture, you name it, um, interview advice, and I can help you and give my um, input and help and support and guidance around that. Finally, you'll get lifetime access to all feature updates. Snowflake's changing and evolving. There's new features and releases every week, and you'll continue to benefit from those updates as well. At a high level, there's 10 modules. This is what we cover, everything ranging from the Snowflake architecture to getting data into Snowflake. And then once you've got data, how do you effectively use it, secure it, share it, and work with it to ensure that you get the maximum value from your Snowflake implementation? If you're interested, I've included the application link in the video description below. If this sounds like the thing that you're looking for and you want to supercharge your career, and if you're ready to take the ultimate step, I'd really encourage you to fill out the application form below.